Hello. I'm sorry, I teach large lectures, so hello. hello. Thank you. I know that's annoying, and I know you're not students, but thank you for appeasing me. My name is Michael Rapp. I'm with the School of Communication. I am the director of our Communication 103 program. So I teach public speaking on campus. Good and bad. This is kind of interesting for me because this is what I call a small, intimate group. My lectures are probably, on average, about 450 students at a time. So this semester, I teach five large lectures. I average 450 students per lecture. I'm a little bit over 4,000 students, or 2,000 students this semester, which begs the question most of you are asking right now is, how the heck do you grade all of that? I have 34 graduate teaching associates. That's <laughs> so what I'm doing now. So now I have to sneak in and watch all of them teach at least once this semester. So that's one of the extra responsibilities I take on. Um, it is my second year in this position. Last semester, for the past seven, eight years, we had a professor running this position. He went on sabbatical last semester. I took over on an interim basis. He came back and changed positions. I took this over. One of my colleagues in the department said to me, um, are you really taking over the Common 103 program? I said, yes, I am. He says, well, I thought you were smarter than that. So that's <laughs> kind of where I am. And I've been asked to speak with you kind of about my personal experience using rubrics. I'm going to show you two different ones. And the first one, and I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus with this, but the first one is one that we were using previously with this. And this is the one that we had. And and by no means is it incorrect or wrong, and one of the comments that was just made is that this is a work in progress. And I'm going to kind of show you where we started, I'm going to show you what we're doing currently, and then I'm also going to share you with things I'm doing, I think I'm doing incorrectly and I need to improve. And I think that you're always getting better at this. I don't think I'm ever going to design my perfect rubric and be happy with it. I think it's something I'm going to be continually tinkering with. We also, the School of Communication, went through a review last semester. And so um, some people are actually in the room that went through the review for us. And one of the things that was talked about was, well, can we see your handouts for each individual assignment? So we passed those on, and one of the comments from our review was, your student learning outcomes aren't clearly stated. And I think it would help and behoove the program, your graduate TAs, and yourself if we had more clearly defined student learning outcomes. And some of them I had were like, to understand. Now, how do you assess understand? And that was kind of the things that we're going through as I stand in front of the screen. I think I would know this better if teaching public speaking. <laughs> Sometimes we uh, don't always practice what we preach. So we're kind of in this whole thing of, well, how do I assess, understand? So one of the things that I had to do was I went back and I changed all of our, our learning outcomes. What are our student learning outcomes? And then it was to demonstrate and to be able to identify. And now it's something specific that we can go back and assess. And I was struggling a little bit with this. I thought, okay, I think these are good. And I did what some people have just mentioned. I took it to my department chair. I took it to other people in the department and said, could you look at this for me? What do you think? And we actually had about three or four people come in and look at things. We're part of the National Communication Association. So I went to their forums and I said, what do they tell people who teach our basic course? What are their standards that they put in their grade? So I, this is where I kind of changed. And this is some of the things I, I went through. But it was really difficult. Can I, the things I'm asking them to do, can I assess? I have to take 34 graduate TAs and put them all on the same page. I have to get 2,000 students that are taking this class right now and say my experience was the same no matter which GTA I had. That's kind of my battle to fight. This was one that we had been using in the past. And by no means, as I say, is it incorrect. And we went with kind of a five-point scale. We broke it down into didn't meet, met, exceeded, and excelled. And this is what we kind of looked at. We talked about verbal communication. Pronunciation is fluent. Language choices are appropriate. Word choice is clear. We looked at the nonverbal volume, pitch and rate, gestures, eye contact. Are you confident? So we kind of looked at this. And what I looked at, we looked at introduction, relevant tension getter, preview. And I looked at these and I said, okay, these are bad by any means, but how do we always kind of make things better? And I was, I went to school here, I have my master's here, and so I was a GTA. And I remember working with some of these, and the ones we had back in the day when I was a GTA were, if we saw them now, you'd all kind of throw up in the back of your mouth. <laughs> you kind of had that, and it would probably ruin your lunch. So it became one of these things that was like, ooh, well, we got to change this. And so when I looked at this, to me, they were too general. And when we got feedback and said, hey, your handouts that explain the assignment aren't really clearly 
delineated, and they're not actually having really specific learning outcomes, those were the changes we made. And so I went back, and now sometimes we do this backwards, and I'm sure that some people in this room don't like to hear that, but what I end up doing because I was making changes is I worked a little bit backwards. I looked at, what am I, I looked at, I had the assignment done. The speech that you see here is a, it's an introduction speech. Three minute speech we asked the freshmen to do. And basically it's represent yourself and explain yourself to the class through two objects. So I bring in a basketball because I like basketball and I played in high school and I did this. And you present yourself through two objects. So I went back and I said, well what, I want to keep the assignment. Now what am I asking him to do? And then I went and created the student, the student learning object, uh, outcomes. Now I have those. Tell me when you want me to flip it. Perfect. And now I have those, and now, I'm going to ex now I have that, and it's much more clear. I want you to demonstrate clear language. I want you to implement movement. And then what we did is then I went back. Perfect. Thank you. And then what I did is I went back and I said, okay, now i got to clean these up. And these are the ones that we're currently using this semester. And I think you have copies of these as well. So these and our, grad, our GTAs really seem to like these and enjoy these more. So we have some basic stuff. And what I did is I, I got for our GTAs and for me personally, I felt the more specific we are, the easier it is. And so what you see here is kind of more specific. It's very connected to our student, student learning outcomes. And it's much more specific. So now we have uses an effective attention gainer, communicates a specific thesis, previews main points. When we look at, and you kind of see the bottom, when you look down at voice, there's a lot that goes into your voice. And so I wanted to know, and you can look at it yourself, how is their volume? How is their rate of speaking? Thank you again. What is their rate? What is their volume? Do they have variety? And I found that the more specific they were, the better off we were and the easier it was for our GTAs. I also found that, and I, I started off with what I use, and then I went to the GTAs, and I said, what are you doing? But I went with, what are the phrases that you continually write down? And you're grading a presentation. What are the phrases that you seem to find yourself writing down again, and again, and again, and again? And then I got bored of that. And I don't know about you, but my handwriting is absolutely terrible. So I'm tired of students coming up to me saying, what does this say? And I'm like, oh, that says be good. Be good. Oh, well, short for very good. Oh, oh, I did well? Yeah. Sad, but true. Sometimes they come up to me and they say, what does this say? And I think, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> there are times when I cannot read my own writing, which is sad, but also true. So what I did is I found myself writing phrases again and again, and then I just put them in there. So with the speech, with voice, what we can run with is, yeah, do you talk too, too fast and go through everything because I'm really nervous, I'm going to race through this? Or do you speak like my father, who likes to take long pauses? No one likes to talk to him because he takes forever. I get bored and I fill in his sentences. I always wanted to be a ballerina dad, and he gets very frustrated. It makes my mom laugh, it makes him pissed off, I do it more, it makes my mom laugh, it does something like that. It's kind of this evil cycle. So I found that I'm writing too fast or too slow. That your volume was too loud or maybe it was too soft. Yeah. And now what we do is we circle. Now I can go through and I circle. Your variety, you needed more energy and emotion to your voice. I can circle that and then make a comment that is more specific to that individual student versus writing the generic phrase again and again and again. And it seems the feedback I'm getting so far with our TAs, our GTAs, is that this works. This is easy for them. This makes it quicker because sometimes in a three-minute speech, which is the speech, three to four minutes, they might listen to in a 50-minute class, they might listen to eight of those. How do I keep all eight on the same page and then go to my next, come back on the next day and do this again? And this seems to work for them. I also like that it gives us space here to fill in and write individual comments. There's comments on this bottom where you can see the points, and then they can circle. The military says that the quicker you get feedback, the quicker that it's going to actually get to them and then they can correct it. So we do a speech and then before the person, as the person sitting down, we do a kind of informal feedback. What did you like? How can we help this student improve? What else did you like about their speech? And we go. What I've recommended is our, our graduate TAs are teaching three small sections. So they go from one out of say 11 o'clock, they have a break at 12 and then do one and two. Then what they're doing is they're taking all of these back to their office and now they're grading maybe 21 speeches 
And I'm asking them, do you really know how well that, do you really remember how good that eye contact was? Now that you've listened to 21, it's a couple hours later, you're back at your office, are you really going to remember how good her eye contact was? And that's a four or five or three. So we kind of had problems with that. So what we're doing is we're marking scores, we're giving feedback as the class does the verbal feedback for the student. They're marking it, they're tallying it, putting it in a grade book or an Excel spreadsheet. At the end of class, here's all your grades. The quicker you get the feedback, the more it's going to have an impression on you. Because if you give a speech on Wednesday, and you don't get that grade back until Monday, and the person said, you know what, you said, um, in circle, these are the, the phrases we try to avoid, you said, um, six times, seven, six days later, that student's going to go, did I? Really? I guess. You get it back that much quicker, the student's going to go, oh, wow, oh, yeah, I kind of did remember that. Oh, I have to work on that. So the quicker they get the feedback is, is working better for them. And so it's very quick, it's simple. You kind of add up the ones, if you have a bunch of fours, like one, two, three, four, five, I minus that from 50, and we go. I think it's easy to work with a five-point scale. Three or five is much easier. I like working, we had an assignment that was 40, it was 40 points. I'm not a math person, I'm communication. I don't know what 90% of 40 is. 36? So it's, I like the 50s and the 100s. It works very simple for us. Now, the area where I think that we need to improve upon, that I can improve upon, is I haven't clearly defined in a form, in a rubric, what's the difference between unsatisfactory, satisfactory, and excellent. So we kind of put this into our handouts. There's a handout for all the assignments. So that is put in there and explained a little bit. The other thing that we do is we have each of the GTAs start class one, the class usually before the speeches begin, and they put this up on their screen, and they say, okay, let's walk through this. What do you think excellent eye contact would be? And you have the students start to explain it and define it. So if I just kind of look up and look at these three, is that excellent? If I look at the, if, do I look at all of everybody? Can I make eye contact with each person? That's excellent. What would be excellent versus satisfactory movement? Do you move to both sides of this? Even though that gets in my eyes, do you move? And we have the class define it. We have the class go through it, the class before speeches begin, so that they know this is what's expected of me to get more fours and fives. I need to, and in the process of creating another rubric that describes all of these and puts it together. The other thing that we do that I think is helpful is that We'll have them show a, a clip from a YouTube of a student doing a similar assignment from a different school. And we show that on the screen and we play that in class. And then we give all the students this rubric. We say, you grade the speech. You grade it and you see how it is. And you see what you do. And it's amazing because always, whenever they grade, they are always much harder than we are. I'll grade at the same time, and I'll come up, and I'm like, oh, that was a 44 out of 50. And I'm like, how many of you gave an A? Nobody. And there's all these C's and D's. And they're much harder than we usually are. So thank you. So this is how we've kind of progressed ours, progressed ours. And as I said, I'm still in the process of making it better. I'm still in the process of clearly defining what is excellent, satisfactory, unsatisfactory. So we can also give that document to them. And they can read that on their own as well as doing it in class. That's kind of my experience with it. Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. And I know there's a question and answer period later. So we'll yes. save some of those for that. Thank you.